Hello there, this is Apex Colin, and today I'm making another tutorial that is going to be basically um, advanced combat. So I'm really gonna throw everything at you that the combat tracker and how to actually make a very, um, you know, have a complicated battle and make sure that everything uh, that, that you need to. Uh, all the automations and everything that you need to keep track of are there and to make it easier for you, the game master, the dungeon master, um, which is really important and to make things faster so that, you know, turns take less time. Uh, again, that's why we're kind of using Fantasy Ground. So hopefully you've seen the other tutorials that I've been making and you have a really good understanding or a basic grasp of how to really handle Fantasy Grounds, which is, again, uh, an amazing... Uh, tabletop, uh, virtual tabletop. I, I love it. I can't stress how much uh, it is great and how useful it is. And on top of that, the uh, the community is great, uh, and the uh, all the developers and everything. They are they're very good at keeping up on everything. And I really can't. I'm, I'm I couldn't be happier with another company right now. You know, I'm, I'm very very stoked. So, uh, but I really wanted to teach everyone else how to use the Pathfinder Second Edition um, version of, you know, Fantasy Grounds. And there's a lot of different things that are different in Pathfinder Second Edition than in Fifth Edition or Third Edition 3.5, whatever edition that you're using. There's a lot going on here. So, um, let's kind of get into it. And we really, we're going to just, the, um, well, and another thing I should mention is I am going to be making after this a uh, world builder tutorial that's going to have two parts, more than likely a basic and then an advanced. And then I'm going to have like a small tutorial on little things like uh, extensions, uh, what those are, uh, all the little things like yeah, being able to, to make this background, you know, um, just little things, no, nothing too big. I might even include that in the uh, world building. Um, but if anything, right now we're just going to be making a very advanced combat scenario and making sure that we can handle it as a dungeon master as quickly and as efficiently as possible. I sh you should also note, too, that I am always learning and <laughs> there's always something new and something new and different happening on uh, Fantasy Ground. So it's an evolving uh, system, too, on top of that. Uh, this is a newer engine. They're running it on on Unity, so things are very uh, awesome. I love it. Don't get me wrong, but there but there's little touches here and there that are changing and constantly occurring. Uh, so you might see me get a little stumbled here and there, but it's usually it's not a big deal. Uh, and there are different ways you can handle um, a lot of what's happening inside the combat. Uh, and I'll teach you how to do that too. I kind of taught you how to, in the basic, the very, very first tutorial, how to get into a combat uh, and how to throw everything out there. And, you know, that that was so basic. It's, uh, th that's like the easiest way just to get into Fantasy Grounds because that, that's the heart of what you're really doing is battling and why uh, Virtual Tabletop is really nice to have with maps and everything. But we're going to kind of start a little bit from scratch. I'm not going to be teaching how to make maps. I'm not going to be teaching how to make uh, creatures or anything like that in this tutorial. I will, though, be teaching you how to find a map. Um, if it doesn't have a grid, throw a grid down on it, you know, uh, get into some of the more complicated um, things that are inside of a map, but I'm not going to really go into detail about map making. Uh, and then we're going to go uh, into throwing down anywhere between um, a couple enemies to over 100 enemies on, on the map at once, and how quick we can do that with preparation time. So let's begin. Let's say, all right, so... <laughs> All right, cool. Let's get this going. So we are going to uh, assume the player characters um, are resting for the night because, you know, that's always common. The players are going to have to rest at one point. Usually they're traveling, so they're outdoors, and they may happen upon that time. Some creatures find them in the middle of the night. You never know. Uh, and we're just going to go from there. So anyways... 
Uh, well, and again, can't can't stress this enough. Make sure you use your library. You have to open up your modules and make sure that they are unloaded. If they say load, they are not loaded into the system to to um, so that it doesn't understand. You know, if you if you have a creature from Monster Manual number two, it is not going to be in here. Well, that you know best area for for Pathfinder, uh, whatever that you're using, but it's not going to be in here. You will not find those monsters, those creatures, unless you unhaul them out of your uh, library down here, which is very, very important. So uh, anyway, so but we want some images, and majority of the time you'll get image uh, maps from your modules if you're buying uh, preset adventures or one shots or whatever you're grabbing uh, module in general. Uh, but eventually you're going to find your maps under images. Uh, and you're going to kind of see maps in here. And images, just like everything else, is going to have group. And the group is going to be, you know, so if I have in my library, I have the Abomination Vault number one, and I want to use something from that, I can always hit there the group where the map is from from vault number one and i can you know find the map uh, majority of the time it'll say like game master map or player map uh it's you know you normally want a player map of course uh game master map is good to have on hand uh if you do not you know know what is exactly on the map or if you haven't studied beforehand you know a game master map will give you all the loc locale give you everything that you need to know about um, you know, so basically, you'd get, you know, you should know that the game master map is differs from the player map. So if there's secret doors, you'll see them on the game master map. You will not see them on the player map. Um, and all of these maps, for the most part, from Fantasy Grounds, if you do grab them, they have this awesome um, what they call line of sight, and they even have lighting uh, effects, which are great. And for the most part, everything that's in um, I'm sorry, uh, everything that's in, well, let's get like a, trying to show you guys, uh, everything that is inside this map, they do it all for you. It has everything, uh, set so that there are walls and the, the, Players cannot see through them. The doors are shut or they're locked, whatever. Um, it's all there, and that's pretty much when you... Uh, oh, I think you can even unlock it now. Yeah, right here. You can unlock the picture up in this corner, and you can kind of see there's a some difference over here on the right, over in yellow. And there's going to be all these subheadings, but for the most part, the main ones to make these maps really interesting uh well for combat and we'll get into some other stuff later on but this line of sight which makes it so that you can see all of you know the, i did not do this map myself this was bought so you can see fantasy grounds does a beautiful job making line of sight now this means that a creature if i bring out a um uh, one of my players, say uh, Thalgrim here, if I put him down here, um, I can go back to this little play right here, you can see, and I click on that, and I can make sure that it's enabled the line of sight. You can turn it off, and it's completely different, but if I click on the token, um, let's see, I guess it's not giving it, giving it to me, but if I hit player, will it, not sure, okay. Oh, come on. All right, for the most part, uh, a player, when you usually click on this, I mean, in my other maps, uh, it's kind of odd. So actually, I have figured it out. It's the, uh, right here, this is the enable, uh, disable lighting. So if I turn this on, everything is going to be dark. The player is going to see everything is being darkness unless I throw a light on top of them. Um, and that's going to be important because they want to be able to see. But this this particular person, um, Thalgrim is a dwarf, and so he's got dark vision. And I can easily remedy this. Uh, but first, before we do the lighting, I want to show the... So I'm going to take this off. You can see how now if I have my character clicked, I can unclick it and you can see everything gets lighter. Uh, but if I click on my character on the token, 
then I can see what they're seeing uh, and I can judge if a enemy is in this square right here I can judge that hey they have you know because of the shadow um, Thalgrim cannot really attack this creature it, it, well this creature will get greater cover because it's only getting a sliver of um, attention there you know it's just like barely his head that he's gonna see or maybe like a foot or something that he has to try to to attack with so he's gonna get greater cover coming around the um, the bend here you're gonna definitely see that uh, you, the the shadows are changing all the time and uh, characters this is kind of important when you uh, and these icons are getting like smaller now I wish they were a little bit bigger but there's a big update but anyway uh, and you probably can't see that but it's an eye can barely even see I think it says closed uh, but if it says closed that means it's definitely closed you they cannot see through that doorway and they can open it themselves they just uh, left click on it and once you do that it'll open up and once it's open uh, wow and then you have to really you can't just click you gotta really hit that man I wish these icons would get be a little bit bigger maybe there's a uh, there might be a new thing where I can Make those bigger or smaller but anyways they're kind of small right now so anyways uh you can open and close it on when you hit the icon if it says open it's open so that way if you have the token off and you want to know if the door's open you can see it's open if i want to close you hit it closed now another thing about doors which is pretty important is i want to hit shift especially when the door is closed and the and i want to make sure that my players don't just you know all willy-nilly open up a door uh, hold shift and then left click and you'll get this little again you can't see it I wonder if there's a hmm. so yeah there's the, these are pretty small I'm, I'm sure they'll get bigger or maybe in the settings at the starting of the um, you know when you open up the client you might have be able to under, under the options be able to change that because these even my pins look pretty small and, and they stay pretty small as I get closer. I don't know. Well, I'm sure that will change here soon. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you want to make sure that your players cannot open up the doors, just hold down shift and left click on it. And you'll see a little lock kind of uh, icon kind of show up on the uh, the door there. And that's what you want. You definitely want that uh, icon. And, and I'll eventually show you how to build walls and to do all this all willy-nilly with these maps but for right now um we're not going to get that into it so the the last thing is if you open up the door like you can really see uh something that's behind that one square there it's going to change the perspective Oops, and i want to get rid of this uh of you know where these the the actual line of sight is so line of sight's pretty sweet uh in this it works very well so that's that's your line of sight um the other thing i was mentioning oh and another cool thing um if you say i close this door or i was somewhere you're you're gonna be able to see um to like anywhere you've the the player hasn't been to is gonna be very black very dark but places that they've been to is gonna kind of be a little dark and they can kind of see the map so that way they kind of know if they've been to a room or not uh, and a good way to kind of study the map to, to go back to doors they haven't seen before so really nice clean little system there but the other thing that we're thinking about and, the, and again this is line of sight this is that little brick up here the, there's a bunch of these icons right here for the map and to open those up it's just this little this little uh, lock lock it up in the corner there right next to the arrows to uh, bring up the map or to make the map you know get lowered um pretty important and all right and so we're going kind of back to thalgrim and teach you one other thing that's kind of important if you really want to have a really cool lighting system um another thing is is that they have this actual lighting and say if I do put on lighting which is over here in play you have all these actions tabs over here at the at the right here this will for the most part um, you want most of these uh, I mean unless you want 
uh, to completely go old school. And I'll show you even how to do that, where you just create a mask and you open it up as they keep going uh, forth. You know, that's that's a pretty easy way of, uh, you know, opening up the map. But this is some advanced fun stuff. Uh, so that's that line of sight that I had right here. Just want to make sure that that line of sight is there. Otherwise, if I click this, um, Thalgrim here is going to be able to see everything, you know, this entire map. So if you if you want to do that, go for it. You know, the, every Dungeon Master, Game Master has their own style, uh, you know, and it doesn't hinder the game. You know, if it makes it more fun, go for it. But if it makes it so it's not as much fun, you're you know, there's just too much things to think about. You don't want to think about the map. You know, just open it up. All right. So anyways, but we want line of sight on and we want lighting. So once I hit this button right here, lighting is going to go. Uh, it's going to make everything go dark. So everything is dark now. Thalgrim cannot see, but Thalgrim's a dwarf, so we want to make sure that he gets his uh, low light vision. So again, these little icons up here, going to click on lighting, and we're going to go down to, uh, I think it's behavior. No, nope, no, nope, my bad. Presets. Uh, oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Uh, there's another category down here of so once once we hit lighting we go to this these four categories over here there's add light there's token light uh, token vision and ambient lighting we want token vision because we're gonna actually add it to the token so it stays there for this entire map um, and I'll kind of teach you later on how to do some other things. Again, when we do world building, we're kind of throwing everything together. And at one point, I wouldn't mind making a video where I'm actually running a session. I'm playing the slumbering czar right now inside my open world. So I have like this twist on the slumbering czar, but it's for the most part, like 75 to 80 percent of it is. Uh, it's uh, Greg Avon's uh, slumbering czar, and it's really fun. I've been able to program the entire book into uh, this program. Uh, yes, it takes a lot of time. <laughs> I can't even uh, explain. Uh, I think I'm like on 450 different rooms or, or events or whatever you want to call them in, inside here. But anyway, uh, let's get back to lighting. So we go to lighting here and we want to make sure our token here has dark vision so we want to select dark vision there are others there's uh, bl blind sight and true sight blind sight uh creatures that you know really they don't need to see because they can actually like they can see it in their head uh and then you have the true sight which is you can see invisible creatures you can see everything you know uh dark vision though we want to make sure that Algram gets that dark vision, so on the, especially on this map. Uh, so we want to make sure that Thalgrim is cl like we're clicking on him and, and that he's selected. If he's not selected, it will actually not work. So right now, I do not have Thalgrim, you know, uh, selected. Once I select him, and I can see this kind of ring around him, um, I want to hit this button right here, Add Vision. Once I hit that button, you're now going to see that, whoa, he actually can now see. He can see up to 60 feet, near, far, whatever. And you can change all of these settings, like, uh, you know, how far you actually want his far range to be or how uh, near you want his near range to be. I believe the near range is, like, everything is clear. Far range is going to kind of be a little darker. Um, so if you want them to be exactly the same, just keep them the same. Uh, and then fall off, uh, I believe, is where... You know, I'm not exactly sure. I believe that is the darkness, maybe? Uh, and you can uh, turn this on and off, toggle the vision, but we want to make sure that's on all the time, so we just add the vision. You can easily delete the vision off of someone if something occurs, like a spell or something, and they get something different. But now you know that he's got his dark vision. But So that is up here, the token vision. But say we want um, a token light. Say, say he's got a torch on him. Um, same thing, we go to presets though, I think that's the same thing, yeah, presets for, uh, for the uh, token vision, but we go to the token light, which is the icon right here, and then we kind of come down here to the uh, presets, and if I want him to have a lamp or a torch or something awesome, uh, I don't know, let's just, just say torch, uh, you know, actually let's do this so you can kind of see this, I'm going to go back, I, I have him selected still, but I can hit the 
you know, the Lee vision. But say, like, you know, he has a torch, so we go back to, to token light. Um, and torch will automatically do all the uh, settings for you, or, you know, or um, else do torch. So the settings are, you know, bright, 20, dim, 40, you know, fall out, all, all the good stuff. It's got a flicker effect, too, which is kind of cool. So making sure the green is on him, or red if it's an enemy. And then, bam, I now have a flicker effect. Oops. Um, when I'm running around, and I believe the, the the players will actually see that. Can't really see the flicker effect very well right here, but um, it's pretty cool uh, though that you can throw on torches, you can throw on all that, uh, just by using right here the lighting. And so the lighting is pretty important. You can actually add lights to the map. We're not going to get into that though right now. But just remember that if you want to use those two categories, which is the line of sight and the lighting, that's exactly what you want to do for your map, okay? Um, and if you want to see what your players are seeing, you can always hit enable the player vision preview, which is right here. This will really darken out everything, and you can really see what your player is seeing. So this is exactly what my player is seeing. If they get up to this door and, you know, they open it up, I got to kind of... There you go. That's exactly what they're going to see. You can see how beautiful that looks, the darkness. And again, as I'm leaving the room, it's leaving like this gray area behind from the rooms that I, I was in. So real easy for me to be like, hey, look, I, I wasn't, I haven't been to that door nor through that door. So, you know, and other enemies can come into these spaces too later on. You can, you can add in enemies. They, they're, you know, your players aren't going to be able to see them until they get back into that room. So those rooms can be repopulated without your player's knowledge. Awesome, awesome stuff here, right? Great stuff. All right, let's see. Okay, so that's that's the effects. Uh, we, we're going to take off the player vision for now, and we're going to take off that lighting. Um, or, you know, be honest, I, I'm, I'm not going to be really using this map for this battle. So the map I'm going to be using, we're going to get rid of this, just kind of hit the X up there. Boo, bye bye And you don't have to worry about the tokens, you're getting those out of there, uh, or, or any of those. Um, like, you, you really don't have to worry about most, most uh, things, because you can always grab everything off your tokens right off the combat tracker. Combat tracker is everything, remember... In combat, the combat trackers, everything. We're going to get to that here in a moment. Let's see. But right now, we want some images. And I was explaining earlier, what if my players were, I don't know, in the wilderness? Boy, trying to find... Ah, uh, the snow grid. Uh, no. I wanted to make a camp. Let's see. Kind of wanted to make a sort of camp. Okay. Uh, yeah, this will work. So let's get something fresh. Say that you got a couple maps off the internet or um, more than likely a couple from uh, oh, anywhere, any source. You know, I buy a lot of PDFs. I use Heroic Maps a lot. I'm a huge fan. Uh, their Patreon is great. However you get your maps, though, you can throw them in here. Um, and I'll explain that, how to do that later on. But for right now, majority of the time, you're just going to get your maps from the library. Uh, but when we do world building, I'm going to show you how to do all kinds of fun stuff. So you can grab whatever book that you want. And as long as you have the PDF, everything is good. Everything is golden. All right, let's do this. So I'm going to hit this uh, kind of arrow up here. Make sure my map is nice and pretty. Get rid of these images. Uh, but the first thing that you're going to notice is there is no grid. Uh, I wanted to show you this because then that way you can kind of see a little bit more about how to throw down a map and then kind of create it a little bit really quick on the fly if you really needed to. Uh, so let's kind of do that real quick. Let's do some real fast, fancy work to make this kind of interesting. Uh, but the first thing that we need is a grid. Now I can 
go into the yellow area here and I can go all the way to the right from these options that I have here uh, categories up at the top of the yellow the last things are in yellow before you hit the gray uh, and I'm gonna hit you can hit grid at the very uh, far right here and you can kind of throw down the grid from there and this kind of has all the grid details and you're gonna kind of see this layers area down here now don't really worry about that right now uh, but let's say we really want to build a grid um, so we can set grid with mouse if I click here and right now it's in grid mode you can kind of see a little star formation um, but I can I can also do this from uh, right clicking and the background going over to layers and then I can actually go to set grid and that's another easy way so if you prefer using the mouse and kind of setting grid like that la it's pretty easy or you can go into categories up here but you always have to remember to make sure you hit the play category here to be able to select move around on your map and um, I like to use my mouse wheel uh, you know I to move around the map I, I just it's the uh, clicking down on the mouse wheel kind of move around on the map you can also use this thing at the bottom kind of easy it's not as efficient I feel uh, but you know whatever or zooming in zooming out into the area that you need to really focus on uh but let's okay let's kind of get back to it so we want to build a grid real fast now i'm not going to get complicated or like you know i'm not gonna i'm not trying to make this fancy we're just going to build a nice little grid system and i'm not trying to be an art artiste here so uh that that looks good so i just kind of right click on it and i can move now i can take this off if i go back to to layers i can take it off so if i mess up no big deal you know so no big deal grab go back to layers and go to set grid and again just kind of left click and drag as you're holding down the left button there and i can be more like i believe it's more like that okay so that might that might work uh, I, I I don't know that that works or you know if you really feel that it's not quite where you want it at um, at you can uh, go to the adjust a position here and this will minutely you have a big one which can nudge way bigger uh, areas while this little minute one will will go just teeny tiny little bitty or you can actually throw in the numbers. Uh, it, it, sometimes like if it's really offset you have to throw in the numbers and you just go for the best that you can go for uh, if you want to have a little bit of a tint to it or a color you can click on this tint and you can actually add a little color to it so if I really wanted people to really know where everything is at you know I can make it like a, a super red color um, but it looks like that's not really working. So maybe a green color, whatever you want. And then you just kind of hit OK. And so now I have like a green kind of thing. If it if it's too contrasting, you know, some players like to kind of have a uh, a grid that kind of works. And, and again, I'm not being an artist. It's not following the lines uh, at all. Because I just want to show you really quickly how to throw all this down. All right. So that is the grid. If I really wanted to throw in some line of sight for fun um you click on the line of sight category up here and there's this first one the select one uh that's the second category is down do not uh to forget that this is going to default a lot so if you're thinking oh it's not working it's because this defaults a lot sometimes you click on certain things and it defaults back to this uh but we're going to make just some really easy lines uh, so we go to the second one to the right we want to make sure wall is clicked and when we do this it's going to put it straight onto the layer of map we can actually make our own layer of wall so that way we could just delete it if we really wanted to but for right now we're just we're just hu uh, hustling and bustling here so we want line line is kind of easy because if i click once makes a little little uh white square and then kind of get a nice little line there and then I can pop click again and I can kind of change where I'm at and then I can double click to to get rid of it if I'm done um, or I can hit the escape button to get rid of it so because you know right here this kind of looks like it's open you know if enemies were right here they shouldn't be able to see through this kind of looking dilapidated or uh, I guess half 
uh, built uh, foundation that is no longer that exists. So uh, that something used to exist here, of course. Uh, and again, I, I, that's the line effects. But say I want something a little bit more elaborate. Next to the line under the second category in the in this yellow area, I can go to this little box or rectangle, and I can make a actual rectangle uh, with uh, you know in in an area. Instead of making a line, I can click, and you want to make sure it's up in the corner. I'm going to kind of square off this area, or you know make a rectangle in this area. And I want to kind of click the corner, and then click and hold. And then I can just kind of bop. There we go. I'm done. You know, that's how fast it is. And watch this. All right. I have a bush here. Um, I can go over to this tree, which under type here, hit tree. This is for terrain. And I can do the same thing. But this time, instead of going to rectangle, I'm going to go to, well, I think uh, ellipse. And this is going to kind of make a circle. And again, you kind of want to pick an area that's that you can click and drag, and bam, now I have an area that is going to kind of make sense. Oh, and it looks like I still need one more wall there. Go back here. Make sure I got everything correct. Bam. Again, I'm not trying to be an artist, and for the most part, your players aren't going to care if you're an artist, because on their end, it's still going to look pretty pretty sweet they're still going to be entertained you know you're they're not putting in any effort you're putting in effort so depending on that if you want this to be beautiful looking which is you can spend me mere minutes to hours to make it very articulately beautiful but you know depends on how your your players are going to react all the same way so in my opinion it's it's kind of a kind of give or take you, you know you, uh, be be artsy if you want don't always be artsy. I, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm a kind of guy that doesn't really try too much, but at the same time, like it, certain things, I kind of want to look nice. All right, so now we kind of have this going for us. And if I throw down, um, let's kind of, you know what? I'm gonna kind of throw down a different token here. Let's, I don't know. We have Count Shankula. Uh, let's kind of throw him on the board and to make sure, because right now if I click on Count Shankula, you're not going to see any any of that stuff that I added. Uh, now we can see the grid. The grid works beautifully. You know, I can even hit my arrow quick or I can I can cl click and drag him. Um, you know, and that's one thing. Uh, but I can't see any of the, you know, I want those line of sight. So enable line of sight right here. And then you can kind of see now I have uh, the shadows kind of all over the place where I want them to be. This fire actually looks a little cooler now because it you know looks a little yellow and looks like more moonlight over off to the, here to the west. More actual yellow with uh, you know the the shadows kind of work really well with uh, of these two different grays and yellow colors. So cool, it looks really good. Um, you know, nothing fancy that I did. I know that was really quick. I can throw down a map pretty quickly and, you know, throw all that down, especially if you're trying to make like a, a world where you never know where the players are going to go. Um, you know, but there are going to be times I use a lot of the same maps for a lot of the same, uh, you know, if it's in a town with a market, I have like three, four different market town, like maps that I kind of, you know, rotate and, you know, you can change the colors and things like that to make them even really cool. Um, give you an example. Uh, there's this effects tab right here. If I hit the effects tab, I can actually go to the effects type and I can choose all kinds of cool stuff like well, underwater. There's an underwater effect. There's a snow effect. You know, these are great because I can I can change these on the fly all the time. But you know, a nice little one is the adjust colors because I can be you know make this a little bit more green. Say it's like a I don't know like the toxic waste area, or say I just want it to be really kind of sinister looking and give it kind of like a real kind of dark purple kind of feel or you know maybe it's under the water and or you know incredibly late at night uh but yeah there's all these really cool effects so that's the map system but we're just going to kind of get rid of the um this effects tab here if you do this you notice how the effects tab kind of created a layer itself to get rid of a layer you kind of just click on it make sure it's highlighted and down here below delete selected layer all right so we're going to go old school all right.
Okay, let's uh, continue on. So now say we want a actual wool battle. All right, let's kind of get it. I'm going to get a couple players. Let's get a Thalgrim. Bust this person out. This person's a little bigger. Bust this thing out. This thing's a little bigger too. Um, one more. So that's pretty good. Okay, so I have a druid slash cleric, and then I have a ranger, and then I have a fighter here. Um, so kind of teach you a little bit about how spells will work, range, and some close-up attacks will kind of work. But you can just see, I just grab the picture of the portrait, and I bring it out onto the battlefield, and that creates the token. That is really important because you cannot just open up characters. You can't just throw down a token onto the board. It is not going to happen uh, because it won't compute. It won't make sense. You can't just go into the uh, best area, throw down an abandoned uh, whatever. Well, that created. Yeah, I can't. But I can't really just open up uh, this creature here, throw down the icon. Oh, I can throw down the icon. Cool. But I uh, guarantee I can't... Um, oh, I gotta get that out of the... Well, uh, guarantee that I can't actually... Uh, you know, th th this this isn't gonna have any effect. And just to kind of show you, if Thalgrim, uh, Thalgrim were to use... Come on. I think he has a staff attack... Uses a normal staff. Yeah, he's, he's got the staff attack. If I drop it on top of the icon, nothing happens. And this is just a placeholder at that point. It has to th be thrown into the combat tracker. So if I want a, I don't know, a um, an acrobat, <laughs> you know, I got to grab it here, this little icon, grab with the uh, left uh, mouse button and then kind of drag it over and throw it into here and you can see the acrobat then I grab the token and I throw it onto the board that way the acrobat is now the, all the stats that are here correlate to this token it will not work any other way all right very important so uh, we have to make sure everything that's in here is out in here very 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 important so kind of using a couple things we're going to be focusing on these gray area up here a little bit all right and we're going to be focusing on the combat tracker a lot here too and a lot of what's happening inside the uh combat or the uh what do you call it, the dice tray or the chat dice tray i'm not really sure what this is called but i would call it the, the chat dice tray area um and we're just going to pre pretend that these are everyone that's in here it's best not to have anyone else in here uh because uh they will pop up when i take someone's turn bop right there you can see next turn is unidentified creature which is this creature but say i don't want my players to know that that creature is there i shouldn't put it in here yet but say i have it on the board somehow uh just make sure you hit this little eye icon underneath the creature to make sure that they're not seen if you turn this off you can kind of see it going half invisible there they will not be visible so you can kind of see they're they're kind of not really there uh so just kind of showing you boop boop and i could do the same thing uh now i have it so in my options up in here if i go to options i believe the oh what is it the icon i think it's in combat the skip yeah turn uh you want this on turn skip hidden actor on. So basically what that means is that if this is a hidden actor, and I don't want anyone to know that that person's there while because they might be hiding behind this rock. No one can see them, uh, you know. Oh, and I can even see. See how that's cool? Like, I can hide this creature behind the rock, and I can automatically see these two. All these players cannot see it. So, you know, if it's hidden, 
the icon, you know, just kind of click that eye icon. And what's cool about the combat tracker, because uh, we're going to be hitting this down arrow a lot. You're going to hit that, and it, and you can see it just went from Thalgrim, and then skipped right over to Albron. So, pop. You know, see that? See how that happens? Actually, Albron's dead. So I'm going to take him off. He died my last. He's a vampire, and he got... He got messed up by uh, some stuff. Anyways, um, so Thalgrim here is right here. And then we have, we're going to uh, make sure that this is showing now because we really do want to just kind of show off the combat. Uh, and all right, so this is the combat tracker. You can, I mean, usually the first thing that happens is initiative. You can tell your players to roll initiative. Um, when you throw the icon or the uh, token in from the best area, it automatically, like the acrobatics, I'm going to throw the acrobatic, it automatically throws in the, uh, it rolls for you, which is this first, very first column here. You're going to see name and, uh, and then under the combat tracker, and then you're going to see initiative, HP, temporary HP, wounds, and current HP. Uh, wounds is considered like how much HP is gone, okay? Um, or taken away from your current HP or from your total HP. Initiative, though, is important because you're going to, you know, want your players to, you know, know their turn order. And so that's important. But it automatically does initiative when you throw in the icon. So you, you never have to really take initiative for your monsters unless you really want to. If you really want to, go for it. I never do because um, it's just that much more time, you know, that you have to... To, to add, you know, it's just it's just more time, and you want to make things as as efficient as possible. Uh, all right, so everything is kind of thrown in here already, and we're gonna see that Thalgrim goes first. Now, one thing you probably want to do that saves a lot of time: this little arrow that goes down, that goes down to the next token, next actor. You can grab it and actually click and drag it right on top of a. Um, one of these hot keys down here, which is great because now I can just hit F12 and it goes right straight down. So uh, it saves me a lot more time. I don't have to worry, um, you know, especially if I'm just sitting there and I'm writing down a lot of notes. I just hit F12. The next person knows that it's their turn. Another cool thing, it dings. You can actually make sure that it dings when the player's next turn is under options so that when they get to their turn, especially if there's something taking a long time, I've had it where I've had over 100 creatures and they had to take a turn all at once. I like my... Um, or, or, you know, most of them had to take their turn at once. Uh, not You know, so like about more than maybe a hundred of them were taking their turn at all in one time. So it took like 20 minutes before I got to another player character's turn. So uh, if that occurs, um, the dinging really helps because <laughs> they're going to do something else, you know. Uh, anyways, let's see. So we have Thalgrim here and Thalgrim. Let's kind of make this easy. Let's kind of start with Thalgrim. And when he moves on his... Uh, on the map, there's going to be two different ways they're going to have this set. And the first way, the, the way I like to have it set is to make sure that my tokens are, are locked. Okay? This little lock here and the token icon, it, it looks like it's locked. I can unlock the, that icon too. Um, oh, okay, that is locked. Okay, so I like to lock my, my tokens down for the most part. Um, or Or I can unlock them. Uh, whatever, uh, but or, or right now they're unlocked if I hit that button, but it, I can lock the tokens if it shows that. Yeah, so you're going to basically know when it's locked or unlocked because when a player moves, you're going to see a line that occurs and goes down while the player is moving. And it'll have a check mark and a little like X mark. Uh, and the check mark means that you actually agree to their movement, so that way they cannot cheat and just move all willy-nilly around the board. But if you want your group to move all willy-nilly around the board, go for it. They can go all over the place, have fun with it. It's chaos, and that's fun. Um, but 
the you know for me you know if they go over a, a trap or something i want to know if they do so i don't have to really be paying attention to the board i can look up and be like oh there's a line going from here to here to here to here there was a trap here okay and then i can actually grab the icon and move it to the trap and you don't even have to actually click the uh the check mark if you don't want to but you'll you'll see that later on but for the most part uh, or, or you can right click on the character too and you can hit like accept move um but that's for the most part uh it's up to you how you want to do that but i like them moving where they're locked in place so say that thalgrim wants to go and attack and we're just gonna have him walk up you know yeah as normal gonna double click on his character or i can click on his, his uh icon up here when he's in the game and i can see his complete character sheet and he's going to do you know you're going to instruct him that there's the three different attacks because we have the attack uh penalty multiple attack penalty when we are attacking more than once so the first attack let's throw it on top of the creature i just kind of clicked and dragged that was a critical miss but again there's another way that i can attack and let me show you how that works so if I want Thalgrim, or you can explain to Thalgrim that if he wants to uh, make it so it's a little easier on him, especially when you're uh, a mage and you're trying to attack 50 enemies at once, there's a way better way, and this is the way to do it. But I'm just going to kind of show you really quick how, how this works, just with one enemy first to make, make, uh, make sense. So uh, say Thalgrim wants to hit this unidentified creature, um, and he doesn't know what this creature is yet because he hasn't used a um, recall knowledge check to understand, you know, what this this creature is. Uh, but say he wants to make it easy, so you tell your player if you go up to this gray area, there's these th uh, four boxes right here, but three of them are kind of a uh, little bit more vibrant than the last one, which is pretty grayed out. Uh, and you're going to see a flag. You're going to see these two uh, swords clashing and like a bullseye with a um, no smoking allowed mark going through it. <laughs> uh, and that's important. So what we want, we want to make sure we're hitting this creature, which is going to be um, target just a single creature, which is this grayed out creature. So next to the bullseye that's crossed out we want the actual bullseye but we click it and now you're going to actually see it become gray and i get like a little bullseye with my uh ridicule here uh, with my mouse and i just hit this uh did i do that correctly and i think i just click on them yeah if i yeah so if i move uh algorithm away you can actually see this this line up here and say I want to also hit this creature I do the same thing kind of hit the target mode or this little bullseye and I click on the creature again and you can see another arrow up here now I, I say I accidentally click that one well I go over here and I can either clear the targets or I can hit um, I believe if I'm correct I can hit target mode and re-click on the target and yeah it disappears so that's the easy way but you know um but but now this is a good way so instead of going to thalgrim his staff and grabbing and uh grabbing the uh, attack and then dropping it onto the creature i can just click twice and it does the same thing because now it knows its target oh look at that i got a hit now i can either click and drag that damage on top of the monster but i don't have to do that now all i have to do is double click in the gray area and it goes it's applied straight to the creature and you cannot see right there 18 damage went into its wounds and uh 18 damage i did 20 but this thing has a uh, resistance of two bludgeoning so because of that it's 18 and look at how cool that is right there just to kind of show you i throw the damage down it's bludgeoning damage it even says the type right here and it's magic too um and uh awesome because i can see right here the effects that the unidentified creature has is has that bludgeoning resistance right here you could even double click uh Oh no, I can't double. No, that's only for traits. Okay, so um, 
but you can see it right there. Resist to bludgeoning, which is great. And I see the 18, so it worked. 20 was rolled, but only 18 went to it. 18 is now in its wounds. It works beautifully. All right, and then I can just hit this like uh, bullseye with the line through it, it clear targets, and now targets are cleared. So that's a great way. Now say Thalgrim, though, wants to uh, attack everyone with a spell, which are pretty important. So now I can just hit the dueling crossing uh, swords here, and this goes to all the enemies. This, so if there's 50 enemies on the board, awesome. You know, really, really interesting, uh, especially when there's like 500. I'm, I'm going to show you one last thing bef at the end of this, how to make what we call an encounter, which will make this a lot easier to throw all this down. So that's part of the advance. But I'm just going to, right here is just the heart of uh, how to really uh, play the combat out and how you're going to have to inform your players how to do this, which is really important. So the other thing, say we want to use a electric arc. Well, no, let's do, uh, I don't know, Just let's just do something that's like produce flame. Say it, it hits both of these uh, enemies. Now, again, since I have it targeted, um, oh, and this is important too. So when... Um, I should explain that. That's really important. For spellcasters, for the most part, for anyone that are using weapons, your weapons are up in here. When you throw in a weapon into your inventory, make sure that the icon for your weapon, such as the staff, is being worn or equipped. It has that little shirt icon. That way it goes into your actions tab, and then you can actually change everything in your actions tab. If I really need to, I can go to... Um, the off to the right here, off to of the damage is that little, uh, I uh, what do you call it? magnifying glass. And if I click it, I can change a lot of what's going on here. I can change the name of the weapon. I can change the properties of the weapon. I can change the traits. I can add agile, and agile will automatically automate and make it so that um, the you know so it's it, instead of a negative five and a negative ten for my multiple attacks will be negative four, negative eight great awesome thing that we want right so that's if i want to add an agile another cool thing is i can change the attack change the stat you know i think i showed this in the advanced uh one of the advanced tutorials uh and and uh to to get dice in here for damage is really easy if uh so this is like four die uh four die eight right now right plus seven um but say uh was that piercing and piercing and magic all right so you know i'm just going to kind of erase it for now so there's nothing there but i just grab four die eight here again left click right click while holding and i get four and i just click and drag and there we go and so now i have my four die eight and you can do this with anything so if like you know you gain an extra die or like weapon die or you gain an extra uh um any you know you could you can even put a whole another damage modifier in here that is you know uh fire damage i can put a die six and then put type you know uh fire and you know say that for some reason you have a magic item that makes it uh do an extra plus 10 on top of it or well i put minus hoops but you know you can see that and then i can just uh right click on here and i can hit the little trash can icon to get rid of that because uh, that's not actually part of this weapon so we want to make sure it's Back. And you can actually add effects too, which is a new thing. I uh, haven't gotten to that yet, but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But that's with your, um, with your attacks. Same thing with your magic, but magic is more important because when you throw down a magic, which you uh, put, throw down like a uh, add spell class, that's this little, you just right click in the background. And just like adding a weapon off to, off to the right, it's on the bottom, you add a class, spell class. And when you add that spell class, you're going to get this little icon here and you hit the magnifying glass and you make sure, you know, your proficiency is, is, is here, what kind of tradition. And it's really important. You have to put in how many spells, uh, depending on if this is a spontaneous caster or prepared caster, um, which will change how, uh, this person handles their spells. 
Okay, so and the, the changer is right here. You, it's right next to it's this little open book. I think that's prepared as uh, the default, but if you hit it again, it'll turn into spontaneous, which means that now they get. If I put like three in in one, they'll be able to choose three level one spells by clicking um, uh, when when they're in combat, which is this mode down here. They'll actually have three. Uh, of these nodes, uh, circles next to them, and they'll click them for each spell that they choose. But for Thalgrim, he prepares his spells, uh, I believe, and um, he, like, for instance, he's prepared jump twice for the day, uh, or he's see invisibility, uh, which is important because under here, underneath here, at the bottom, very very bottom here, you're gonna see this plus and minus sign. Um, this kind of uh, expands all, this kind of collapses all, but we want to kind of have it all out. Um, the, pre uh, the mode preparation, combat, and standard. Standard is what you're going to get right away, and you're also going to get this display. of It's, it's going to say summary. This is the first thing that you're going to get. So you can see how many actions it takes to cast something, somatic and verbal. Uh, for Acid Splash, you know, you're going to see everything. It looks really nice. It looks really pretty. Um, but what if your spellcaster needs to prepare? Well, you hit the mode again until you hit preparation. Once you hit preparation, you can actually start preparing. I can take away command and add in something else. You know, the command was already used for today, though, say. But say I want to get rid of jump, so I just kind of hit the jump, and I got rid of that, but I, now I want heal. Now you can kind of see that um, little circle has, has entered, and but we're going to go back to jump because we want to have that prepared because that's what Thalgrim had prepared. So that's how you prepare your spells. So that's great. Let your players know that's how they prepare when they're doing their daily preparations. That's at the beginning of the day. Now, but for the most part, we want your mode on combat. And your display needs to be on I or on actions. Okay, which is important because you're going to be using the actions all the time. So combat and actions are the two things. So for instance, if I wanted to use produce flame on these two people down here, I'm going to, uh, and, and this says M attack or M spell, and then this is R spell. So ranged, we're going to be R is ranged, M is melee. So I'm not touching them. I am using uh, ranged attack. So I can either click and drag that little icon on top of anything but since i have them already um targeted i could just click once on these i don't have to double click at all all which is really nice and you can see that it shows if they hit the attack hit or not it looks like both hit now regardless it doesn't matter after if i hit or not because it's all automated i once i hit the blood drop the blood drop is going to be your damage and look at that, it it did it beautifully. One got 16, another one got 26. And I can go back and look like, why did that six, Why did that get only 16? And I'll kind of have to figure what an identified creature it is. I'm assuming it's this one. Um, it's, no, I'm wrong, it's actually this one. And that's probably because it has a, oh, it's got a 10 fire resist. So there you go. So. That's automated, and you can just see right there how useful this program is, <laughs> and it's beautiful. Now, you're always, there's going to be something that does occur uh, every once in a while where it's going to be a glitch. Uh, I've, I've, they, they happen seldomly, I'll say that, but there is going to be a day uh, where one of your creatures just either is made so long ago that the new update is just not working correctly with it, or, um, you know, for some reason, it's just not doing what it needs to do, so you can kind of have to manually go over everything. So, you know, if really this 26 didn't occur, but say it did hit, and I'm like, oh, okay, 26. I go over here and I'm like, well, no, they had a 10 hardness or something, so I minus 10, so 10 from 26 would go, we have to put in 16. Because um, I cannot add in a number into the, the current health, it just won't work. I have to put it into wounds. So when someone heals, that has to go through there. Speaking, it, uh, speaking of, let's say someone needs to heal. Uh, all right, so say, uh, say King Bjorn has got 34 wounds and Count Shankula is at 100. 
Uh, oops. He's got like 125. All right, so he's getting close to dead. And you can see one is wounded. The other one is heavily wounded. Um, all right, so first I want to clear my targets. And now I'm going to hit the flag. And this is going to go to the friendly units. All right. And I just need to find my heal spell. And I know I used it. Ah, there's my heal spell. Um, so if I have... My level 6 heal spell should be up yep, 6 to 10. All right, so I'm going to use um, my heal all the way. And there's the blood drops too. Those should be added because you might hit some undead. Um, but, you know, I don't have to roll because I'm healing automatically. So, But if I were hitting undead, I would have to roll for the spell. And you can actually see that it rolls for... Um, Wow, that's kind of funny. It rolled for every, uh, well, for the three or the two that are on here, uh, or three, I don't know, King Bjorn, Count of Shankula, and Thalgrim. Okay, so uh, for them. But anyway, because uh, you're healing yourself too. But we want to heal, so you just kind of hit the button. Boop. It does it all for you. There you go. So 34, 84, and then 20, and you want to make sure that all is correct. 84 makes sense. He's not completely healed, but it... But he's almost there. And if I really want to completely heal and make time go quick, I just hit zero in the wounds area. Now, let's say that Thalgrim also... Okay, he's using a... Um, in effect, he's using slow on an unidentified creature. Now, again, I can, I can hit target mode and then do that. So when I have slow, there's going to be these like little icons here. And you can just click it. Slowed one goes on, uh, identify creature, and even we'll say effect, slowed one, identify cr a creature. When you go to the unidentified creature number one, you will see that it's slowed is added uh, to the enemy here. And it's just that easy. So we have our little signs here to, to roll and then to heal. And positive. Now say um, there is one thing I do want to add, and I do this with a lot. I actually add in this. Uh, okay, that says cleric. Where's his? I, there's like a spot that should be. Uh, okay, we have his combat. Okay, I'm not too worried about this. But and we have our actions. We did all that. Well, let's get rid of. This this right here so always make sure it's on combat and actions preparation is important because that's when you want to prepare your stuff and then uh, combat though shows you what is on you what you can use and you can actually see when I go to standard it shows all of his stuff on him that, that I've, I've added things like his flying form uh, you know damage for certain things if he does his dragon breath I add in some of these things, but I kind of do this a little different now. This is kind of old-school uh, So it's a, it's a little diff different so I even have like staff two-handed staff staff if he's hitting aberrations does a little bit different damage to him So I added all that in there just by you know throwing in this magnifying glass and you can do the same thing for uh, for spells in here, so you know if you have a player who is using a uh, breath attack, uh, which I've had with another player, which is mm, stout breath here. What I actually did was I added an area for him at the bottom here, and I just called these barbarian skills or whatever. I just said barbarian. So, um, Barbarian is like his dragon's breath. He actually does still have to hit people. So what you do is you just kind of right click. You have to make sure that you do have a magic class, though. That's important. So when you right click, add spell class. All right. But it's not going to be a normal spell class. I just call it barbarian because that's his skills, right? So put, put that in. And then you can put in his class DC, which is the same thing as, as the spell DC. And that's what I did. Class DC. Now, you, I have to make sure that there's at least one cantrip. I put one for the cantrips. Uh, and then that, that's all you need because that's what he's going to be. That's where most of his stuff is going to be at. Where, like, when he rages, I have a little rage thing going on here. Um, just in case if some of the 
sometimes some of the uh, automations don't necessarily work all the time, but this is such a, a great way to, to make it really nice and easy. But uh, example, Dragon's Breath, once you kind of hit, uh, or once you do have the Barbarian and a Cantrip that can be prepared, right click, hit Add Spell, or I'm sorry, or, uh, oops, Ooh, what just happened? I delete that character now. Uh, you want, we want to add spell. So we add spell. So after you have add spell class, you click on the cantrips grade area to add spell. So we added the spell, and we're just going to say this is a bit buddy bop boo. I don't know. All right, and say that this does something. We want to hit the uh, magnifying icon. Well, no, not yet. We need to add a couple elements to it. Say it doesn't attack. So we're going to right click, little arrow off to the right here. This is the add spell action. We're going to add an attack. So that's actually at the top. When I hit this, there's this little add cast. Uh, or this will be like, you know, say, uh, I'm going to sneeze on you, you know, and I'm going to give you some kind of disease. So now you're going to see that the icon is here, but it doesn't do anything and just cast it you know um so bippity bop boo doesn't really do anything yet until we hit this little magnifying glass then we'll kind of see there's some more detail here but we want to hit the that uh magnifying glass that's to the right of that open that up now we're going to get a bunch of stuff and we always want to make sure the targeting is targets you know of course but say that this is an actual like uh, magical attack uh, then we use this first attack we don't use the save so if it's a, a melee attack or a ranged attack or a melee spell attack or a melee or a ranged spell attack that's what we use in the main stat and whatever that you're using for your class miscellaneous modifier and whatnot so so on and so forth um, but say this is a save say so sneeze and you need to take a fortitude save so I want to make sure this says fortitude and I want to say it make sure it says spell DC which um, again, if this is going to be the class DC, it can be the same thing. I just make sure the class DC is, is the same as the spell DC. So it's using exactly what the class or the spell DC would be in general for Bippity Bop Boo, uh, which is a terrible, uh, you know, I sneeze on you and you grow uh, pumpkins for, you know, your ears turn into pumpkins, um, which would be, you know, horrifying. But you can, uh, uh, you know, or, or say like uh, turns your ears of the pumpkins and uh, you take, I don't know, piercing damage from the thorns that come out of the, the uh, roots, <laughs> I don't know, that go inside of you. So, so spell DC or class level fixed, you know, you can kind of change this and add a plus if you really wanted to. Kind of self-explanatory a little bit, uh, hopefully, hopefully you understand that. Uh, but say like it does do damage. But this is not going to be the area where we're going to actually add the damage for that spell or for that ability. We're going to use it uh, later on. So, But say on save, say someone does get a success, for the most part in Pathfinder, it is half damage on success. So down here on save, we put half on success, and that's the only thing that on save has. So we're just put half on success. So now I have Bibbidi Bapu, and I'm going to... Now put in the damage. So again, next to Bibbidi Babu, right click that little arrow that's kind of pointing to the right down. Uh, add spell action, and I'm going to add damage. And now that we have the damage, now we can actually make sure that the Bibbidi Babu does deal some damage. Um, let's just say it deals like I don't know this much. Die twelve damage. And you see, I just grabbed, threw it in there, automatically throws it in there, but we got to say it's piercing at, for the type, you know, or wouldn't really make much sense. And, um, you know, because Root's digging into you. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And uh, so now that's the easy way of getting some damage in there. Oh, excuse me. And so it's 10 die 12. And say we want to make sure that your, you know, the player knows that their ears are going to be pumpkins for ten rounds. They, they, they're deafened. So we want to make sure that we have the 
Uh, so, uh, so we want to make sure that we can see that there's going to be pumpkins and they're going to be deafened. So let's hit this uh, add spell action again. And we're going to hit this little add effect, um, which is going to show that little dude right there. Or woman, uh, uh, I don't know, Slenderman. Uh, so let's go into the little uh, magnifying glass right now. And we can actually add in some conditions. I am going to go over conditions uh, another day. Uh, more for will, uh, world building, and well, but for now, let's say that this actually makes um, you, uh, you know, you ha you have pumpkin ears, and then deafened. All right, and what we want is duration. Most of the time, you can do like a one die six, which is really fun back in the day. That's I, I like that a little bit more. But everything is kind of now fixed in uh, Pathfinder 2E. But don't be afraid to go outside of the 2E rules and realm and do fun things. You know, uh, I actually mix up a lot of the rules from first edition and a little bit of the rule system from 3.5. So I kind of add in things, uh, modified a little bit to make fun uh, or to have some fun. Anyways, let's say that the duration is fixed, you know, for five rounds, you're deafened. Uh, you have pumpkin ears deafened. All right. So now we have that. Um, I can actually add in other things like uh, if you have to take a save at the end of your turn or, uh, you know, anything, uh, a couple other things. But we're not going to get into that. We're just, this is pretty much what it is. Oh, and units too. RND is round, minutes, of course, hours, day. Rounds is what we're going to use majority of the time when we're fighting. Um, so that's kind of where we're going for. Is to, uh, all right, so then bop. Now I have everything that I need. So, say count or uh, say the stout breath wants to, and he's not on the board. But anyways, I, I can still attack even if he's not on the board. But say he he wants this creature, you know, he's gonna make this creature take a save, and the creature does get a success. But remember, it still takes damage, um, you know. But it's gonna take half damage. So we just kind of do the same thing, kind of throw the damage to the top, and you're gonna actually see. Oh no, it got a critical success. My bad, so it's not going to take any damage. Let, let me kind of show you the... Uh, uh, okay, there's a good one. It got a success, so now it's going to take half damage. So, bam. And you can see 21 partially resisted. And then, if I need to, and say it got a critical failure or something like that, I can throw this on top of it, and you're going to see effect. You have pumpkin ears deafened uh, for five rounds, and that will actually go into the creature that we're looking for, which is this little effect right here. You have pumpkin ears duration five rounds. And so now I know when I look, and this is important, as a game master, always look at even though when you get to a monster's turn, this is going to kind of be weird because you're going to see all of their actions right here. Always look at the very bottom. In fact, I usually suggest the little uh, Slenderman icon should be open for the entire entirety of everything. So you can see all of everyone's uh, effects. So I can automatically see now, which will have these kind of red icons, but I can see resist and I can see slowed for this this creature, but say, you know, um, I did something to, to get rid of slowed, I just kind of click the delete icon, which is this red kind of dot uh, with a little white line in it. And, you know, that's all I have to do. And this is such a great way, though, to keep track of everything that's going on uh, which is really, really, you know, if um, something, you know, because you're not going to remember, especially when you get to high levels, there's going to be a lot of chaos happening. And so you're going to really want to pay attention to the effects or the conditions of the all the players and your creatures in general. So this is pretty important to keep on. I like to keep that on. Uh, and you're going to see that there's a bunch of icons up here in this gray area. And it's the same thing in this gray area here too. All right. So we're getting close to the end of this kind of tutorial. So I, I'm not really going in order or anything. This is just all the really crazy basic stuff you guys should... Uh, not basic, but advanced stuff that you should learn. So we kind of have this uh, advanced... 
stuff up here, kind of making sure we can um, target creatures. If we have 100 creatures, and again, I'm going to show you that at the very end how to make an encounter. This would be the very last thing to do, and then we'll go go into that. But we're almost there, and uh, <laughs> I know it's these are a little longer than usual, but I'm trying to, uh, I want to get everything as much detail in as possible, and there's probably some things that I'm forgetting, and a lot of other things that are going to be, they're going to come up, and you're not going to know exactly what to do, because there's always new rules and new things occurring, and I probably skipped over a couple that you're probably wondering about. A, you can either go to the community, which is awesome, just ask them some questions uh, on their forums, they're great. Majority of the time um, you'll get an answer pretty quickly uh, if not just Google something you know most of the time Google has it uh, the, not always you know of course uh, and um, but but don't hesitate to get on the forums and fantasy grounds everyone is very nice and friendly uh, and, and are very supportive I've I really am happy with the community I, I have my answer I think question uh, had a question uh, answered within I think an hour and I looked everywhere but the old one thing is I, I didn't go to City Hall or something what they, they call uh, City Hall or something like that where, where all the your questions are answered for certain things uh, I'm not going to get into that either right now because I can't remember it I don't go there very often usually I can kind of figure out things uh, pretty quickly not not always though um and that was like the one time i couldn't figure out something which was actually trying to go through walls it used to be where i could grab someone and go through a wall but see i can't go through that wall right now if i hold down shift i can go right through this wall and i can bring my character anywhere i want on the map just with shift but in general characters can't go through walls if i created a wall they shouldn't be able to go through a wall right so that's kind of the, the thing and i couldn't figure it out you just hold down shift shift go th through the walls oh and another cool thing if you want to make this arrow just hold down both your uh, mouse keys or you know your left and your right mouse uh buttons and bam and just click i uh, kind of hold them down and uh, drag and if you hold down shift you're gonna get this awesome area effect uh, which is a box you know so if you're doing like a kind of boxy kind of thing uh, or you can bring in if you hold down uh, control you bring in a burst and if you hold down alt you bring in a cone you can also do this by right clicking and going to the arrow pointer here and selecting you know circle cone square arrow you can do that too but it's just easier to, to do this yeah i like that a lot better and it, to get rid of it just double click you know or not double just click both your uh uh mouse buttons together again it goes away really quick easy nice efficient now let's talk a little bit about this in here we're going to talk about the combat tracker a little bit more in depth and in detail it's not going to take very long there's not much to it uh you're going to probably understand it pretty quickly Okay, so now uh, I'm on my creature, and say I kind of well, let's let's kind of get into this initiative and say like uh, I don't know we got the same initiative me and Thalgrim. You can just manually override this. You know, say I want forty. It's that easy. And say my HP though, <laughs> this I can't change. Any number I try to throw in there, the HP is not gonna change. That is your total HP. And that will always stay the current or exactly what the, the HP is. You cannot override this. I don't even think control, yeah. You cannot override that whatsoever. The only way, excuse me, to override this HP is to go into your actual character sheet and go to the HP and override it itself, uh, you know, uh, right there. So kind of unlocking it and doing that thing, but we'll learn about that another day. So, all right, and then we have our temper HP. Say this creature's got 12 temper HP. Just throw it in there, it's blue, so we know that's temporary. And that will go away first before anything else will go away, before uh, actual HP will disappear. Uh, that's what we want. And then, um, of course, wounds. So, again, I can't stress this enough. You're not going to be able to actually just put in, you know, add in 
HP, you know, so when you heal, it's like a plus, right? You know, I'm giving you guys plus 10 HP. Well, I can't actually put in plus 10 HP into the current hit points. I actually have to subtract it out of the wounds, okay? Which is a little weird at first, but once you kind of get used to it, it's not too bad. Um, as far as I can tell, there's no other method uh, as of now. But the wounds basically, so say they do 10, uh, they heal for 10, which is really easy because 34 minus 10, 24. So I just kind of throw in 24. So that easy. Uh, again, keep a calculator around on you because you want to do it really quickly. You don't want to sit there and do math for like, you know, if it, if it takes you like, you know, three seconds every time to do that math, for every creature on their turn, and there's 10 turns right there, that's like 30 seconds of time <laughs> that you could have saved. Uh, and it all adds up. If there's f 10 battles that night, that's three minutes that you could have saved. I know it doesn't sound like a lot right away, but trust me, when you're playing a campaign for over a year, you cut corners. <laughs> so uh, you cut corners as much as you possibly can. All right. So that's kind of the whole idea to understanding. And, and same thing with players. Uh, it's the exact same thing with players. Um, one thing that's that's kind of different, though, is this new um, little icon over here. Uh, and if I don't want the players to know the effects that are on them, I can make sure that that is, I believe right there, they can't know what's actually on them. But when it's red, they can know everything. If I'm correct, uh, display character effects. Okay, uh, I, I know that, I think that's effects that are from their character sheet. Not, not a big deal, you're probably not gonna be using this. I never use it, um, to be honest. And, it's not that big of a deal. I'm, and again, there's going to be a couple things that I'm not quite 100% used to or familiar with. I'm just giving you what I know and my, the way that I run a game session. And you can figure out better ways and uh, go for it. You know, figure out awesome ways. That's the that's that's the whole idea. So this right here, this little symbol is uh, I can change it, and I can actually make this creature become friendly and now it's actually green around the borders when I click on it just like the players instead of when I click on an enemy it's it's red now I don't like to use um, I mean you can do this this is a neutral uh, character you know so it's yellow and the players are gonna see that they go oh it's yellow this is neutral I don't know if this is a friend or a foe you know but a lot of times if it's a non-player character where I don't want them to know, I, I always automatically make it friendly, you know, so they see it. But they don't know yet until they actually start talking to the non-player character and then find out, oh, is this, you know, this character actually doesn't really like us that much. And and it makes it a little bit more exciting. So neutral, I mean, you can still use neutral. Uh, neutral is fine. Go for it. Have fun with it. But, I mean, it's up to your play style, whatever you like. All right, and then here, say I want to target um, enemies. Instead of using this up here, which is really, I can, uh, enemies can use the same targeting system in the gray area up over here on the map, but uh, I can also use it right here on the combat tracker, just hitting the target area, and it pops up this, like, targeting, I don't know, icon area, and there's like a clear targets and there's a drag onto new targets. So you actually have to click and drag this onto the targets you want to hit. So if I want to hit these two targets and I want to, you know, attack with my melee and you just scroll over these uh, and you'll see that like, uh, you know, I have melee claw. I can actually attack both of them at once. You can see I got a nat 20 on one. Oh, and that other one. I still got some, I got some nasties on both of those, and uh, you know I can roll the damage, which which is right to the right of it for the most part. You can see that I did some, some nasty damage there. So um, the you know I'm gonna probably heal them in here in a second, but you can kind of see I I can do the targeting right up in here. It actually shows the characters in the targeting area here 
Um, but I can also clear targets just like that. I'd like to use this if I'm going to be coming back to a enemy that is going to be kind of targeting the same targets. And I want to kind of, you know, especially if I have like 20 enemies out on the board or more, or at least more than 10, and I'm kind of using something strategic, then I'd like to know, you know, making sure what enemy is targeting who. So that way the target, uh, it makes sense. Um, uh, so, you know, and I can remember who to hit and whatnot. All right. So that's the targeting system. I can, Click it again to get rid of that little icon. Uh, there's the offense. The offense is now kind of always on the enemies, not so much on um, your, you know. So Dalgram, I can I can hit his icon. Oh, oops, his offense, and he's got this reaction, but he doesn't really have anything right there yet. Uh, one day there might be something, but this is more for your creatures, but the offense is usually always there. Um, you're always going to have your attacks and then your auto uh, reactions and little things that, you, that your, uh, that your uh, enemies can do. And again, uh, there's a little defense. The defense icon gives you your AC fortitude, so the easy way to, to roll your, your saves if you need to. Uh, but you can also still do this from the character sheet. Or, you know, if I open up the character sheet, I can still roll or click and drag. Uh, all the same. All right, so defense. And then we have space and reach, which is pretty interesting because what if uh, Algrim changed into a dragon? And now his reach and space is now 15. Oh, oops. Wrong button there. 15 by 15. And now you can actually see Thalgrim get, have a, uh, oop, did that actually work? 15 by 15. Yeah, so now when I scroll over Thalgrim, you're going to see this huge <laughs> box where, and you're going to have to do this uh, manually, but you can actually uh, hit control, or hold control, and then, um, mouse wheel and you can make Thalgrim become three by three and then now his space in reach makes sense and correlates to what's going on here so if he does become a dragon I can just do that really easy makes his size bigger he looks cooler and then we can actually see in, the, in that little gray box when you scroll over anyone like for instance this uh, unidentified creature right here um it's showing all the gray areas so i don't actually have to be right next to um king bjorn to hit him it's the gray area is telling me that you know anyone that's within that little gray uh blacked area i can hit them for my that's my reach and so that's that's another great thing really nice easy to see can really plan out different attacks um all right so that's pretty much like reach we're gonna kind of get thalgrim back to where he was and that's another thing you have to make sure he's back to where he was uh, and then effects are the last one and i already uh, kind of said this effects should be on everyone if you go up here um to the very top of where the combat tracker is this will turn on everything for everyone and i always suggest for every battle and remember when you put in new creatures they're not going to be they're not going to be highlighted so you have to re-click and open those all back up to make sure that you see those and they're all the effects because the effects are changing the way combat changes every round every round everything is going to be different you know the no combat is ever the same you can not keep track <clears throat> excuse me you cannot keep track of everything 100 percent of the time so make sure as as much as you possibly can to use that effects all right the last thing we're going to be doing today uh i'm gonna kind of get rid of all right so we want to get rid of all these tokens right click and go to uh, oh no right click on the token and there'll be a delete token but you can also get rid of all tokens but be careful uh, you don't want to always get rid of all tokens, but I'm going to get rid of all tokens on here because I want to show you one last thing that makes life a lot easier. Encounters. And I always have one that's available so I can make them on the fly. But you can also make these, and I'll show you how to do this in world building. 
um, how to make encounters and make it a lot easier for you to throw monsters on, especially when we want a thousand. So um, you can already see I kind of have a plague zombie. Oops. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Oops. All right, go to new encounter. And we kind of, oops, that's not what we wanted either. All right, and remember that little question mark is awesome because it, it answers everything about like encounters and what you want to know. Anyways, um, but we want a, an encounter. But let's get something different. Um, make sure that this is hovering over the icon. Right click, uh, hit the trash can, you can get rid of what, what you have in there. But say we want um, skeleton. So I'm sure there's a couple fun skeleton. Okay, skeleton guard. All right, so say we have a skeleton guard in here. Oh, that's sad. There's no picture. We don't want a picture. No picture. That's so sad. Uh, let's try. I, I like to have pictures. Let's do the. Uh... Oh. I don't know. Ah, yeah, why not? Is there a picture for that? Yeah, Harpy Skeleton. Sounds sweet. All right. And we can even go to Other on this tab for the monster. And I can click on, you know, that's that's a, that's a beautiful looking picture there. Gorgeous. All right. And let's get rid of that. All right. So again, I just have like uh, always one encounter where I can put in anything uh, on the fly. If, if uh, a lot of what I use, especially in the slumbering czar, you're rolling for like how many different monsters. There's always like random monster battles and one out all over the place. So pretty important to try to try to uh, make sure that I'm catering, you know. But say I have, I don't know, 50, 45 of these. Harpy skeletons. Yes, that's a lot of harpy skeletons. <laughs> and well, that's kind of what we're going for. <laughs> uh, let's 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 shrink it down a little bit more though. Let's say let's say 22. But I can put 45. I've I've actually used more than that. I've used uh I think at the most like around 110 on the on a map. Uh players just going all over the place. But anyway, once you make a new encounter here, and I have these harpy skeletons, um, I can take these little icons that are down here, and you're probably noticing there's it says placement. These are great because prior to when you're planning, um, you can put these down onto the battlefield in any spot that you want. This might take a moment, so I'm going to kind of rush things. All right, as you can see, I kind of rushed a little bit. So now you can see I have all these, the placement of everything. But once I'm done um, and I hit this little X, you're going to see everything disappear, right? Oh, no, no, it's it's not gone. You're fine. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to hit uh, Encounters. And say, and this is how you kind of do it. You can name it and everything, so that way you know when you throw in an encounter, you're all good. So uh, what I'm going to do is Thalgrim is by himself, and he's awake, and all of a sudden he begins to hear some sudden noises. Now, if I want all these uh, enemies to appear on this map, all I have to do is grab the little icon here next to new encounter, and I just throw it in the combat tracker. It throws initiative down. Uh, it's going to throw all their placements down. It has all the tokens down for you that are already in there. You're going to see it's going to take a second. Now, when I added in over 100 skeletons uh, or whatnot enemies, it will take a moment. And even with your players, you're going to have to let them know, do not really mess with I Well, I, I let them know, you know, try not to really mess with the system. Uh, hit a lot of buttons or anything or draw, you know, anything because you're throwing down a lot of information into the system all at once. Um so you just kind of warn them prior to when you make an encounter that has more than 10, I would say, uh, enemies. Uh, maybe more than that. 10 is really not that bad. It takes a second. Like you just saw there, that wasn't really that bad. 100, though, it did take a good, like, 30 seconds for it to kind of load uh, and, and take its time. But right now, they're in, they'll always come in 
um, unseen, like they, they you cannot see them, but they're already uh, in in here, uh, more than likely way down here. Yeah, you're gonna see that they're they're level fives. They're not that great, but um, so compared to what we have right in here, all right. So we kind of can see all of the creatures, which is great because we want them in there, and it automatically you can see the took their initiative, and then we can hit this eye at the very top. And this actually will um, have them all pop in at once. So I can say that they're all coming out of the ground. And Thalgrim is pretty upset. And he wants to use his... Um, uh, what do you call it? Well, first of all, he's going to um, try to attack every creature. And he's got a special healing bomb that he's been just waiting and aching to use. When I scroll over again, I hit the uh, target all enemies icon after I hit Thalgrim's um, uh, token. So that way, he, and you can see when I scroll over, it is targeting everyone, all right? Which is great. That's what we want. Then we go find his, his whatever highest heal is. I think eight right there is pretty, pretty high level. And we're going to actually just Roll it as a fortitude save for all of them. Look at that. Oh, oh my goodness. Even. So you're going to see all kinds of fun things. Then after that, I hit the blood drop icon instead of the healing icon because that's going to heal them. Um, will not actually hurt undead uh, unless we're using the actual, you know, 8 die and then it says positive. So pop. And you can see right there, a lot of these creatures uh, are destroyed. So you can actually see that most of them are actually killed. When an enemy is destroyed, you get this little uh, red dot next to it, and it's great. This is the easiest way to get rid of it. You uh, double click on it, and the icon will actually disappear from the map and from the combat tracker, never hindering you ever again beautiful beautiful all right so this was the advanced combat this is pretty much the end of it hopefully this answers majority of your questions on what you want to do or, or how to run a combat uh, advanced combat scenario and make it a little easier on you now i i am all over the place a little bit on this because there's no real like best way to like there's no real great way to start something and end it but i feel that this was a good method to show you throwing down the map throwing down the players uh making sure the tokens are in there um so kind of reviewing everything right here uh and then using the combat tracker for everything combat tracker and the tokens need to come from that and then i can actually make um you know spells and weapons and things that i can throw onto the um tokens uh, either on the on the map or um through the combat tracker you can actually even use the icons up here when the players are in uh your session you can use those to roll attacks or uh throw down conditions whatever no worries um so a lot of different ways right there just to show you that we can actually have a lot of fun uh and then the encounter at the end i just showed you how to build a very fast and a lot of enemy encounter it's really not that hard it's just hard throwing the placement now one thing i should mention when you're throwing the placement down if uh, your players are already on the board and they're watching me place a token down from the encounter they're going to see that token on the board okay so you don't want to do that you want to make sure that they're not on the board or if anything turn on line of sight where they can't actually see anything if they don't have any token lights on them and then you they won't see you throwing down everything uh and you know, I wish there was kind of like a mute button. Oh, and one last thing before you go. If you want to go old school and you're not wanting to actually use line of sight, all you have to do is go to layers, right click on the background, go to layers and add enable mask. Everything turns black. All right. But you're going to have this little icon you're going to see with the uh, mouse there. And I can just kind of unlock the areas I want the player to see. All right, old school, of course, but yeah, works. Oh, 
this is a really easy way if you really do not have the time <laughs> or you just don't want to waste the effort to really focus that hard on, you know, something. So that's that's just another easy way. And um, you, the, that's also up here in this gray area. You can turn on the mask and the mask area is over here in the yellow area. So I can actually turn it on and off in here too. I can reveal your, I can actually hide the area um, with this, but I'll, I'll get the, I'll get uh, a little bit more in detail with this later on. Um, I'm probably not with the mask, actually. This is the most detailed you can really get with the mask, you know. <laughs> but there is a couple other cool things with the mask effects when we get with uh, some of the FX and making our own maps. Um, but for now, that's pretty much it. So you have your encounters, uh, your tokens. Um, and if you want to use your party sheet, you can use this party sheet. Uh, for like if you're using skills or whatnot and using the inventory and other things and that's in my other tutorial So that's basically everything right there that you should know uh, to really run a hardcore encounter um, Some things you're gonna have to do manual but other, other things probably not so much. So anyways Thank you for watching my tutorial if this was helpful and educational um you can leave a like. You don't have to. All good. No worries. Uh, comments if you want to. If you like, you have specific questions or anything like that. Um, try to answer them if I can. Uh, and anything. Uh, again, I'm gonna probably make about three more tutorials at the most. Two. Uh, the next two are gonna probably be world building. And the last one will be just a little like extras, some bonuses, like figuring out how to throw in uh, extensions and things like that. So if you really want some um, uh, some outside sourcing stuff, you can you can do that. But anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good night uh, or a good day or whatever it is. Take care. Cheers and uh, peace.